16 through 19, and then verses 25 through 30. To what can I compare this generation? They are like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling out to others. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We sang a dirge and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking and they say, he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking and they say, here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by her actions. Rest for the weary. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in, in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Here ends the reading of the Holy Word. So they didn't play Simon Says, right? They played Simon Peter Says. Yep, sorry, I just can't resist a good dad joke. Like, so this week we will conclude our series on uh, how we are to grow as disciples of Jesus. Uh, we've discussed the need to be in prayer and also listening for what God is doing or what God wants us to be doing. We've discussed the need to bring a brand of radical hospitality with us wherever we go, not just inside the church. And in this week, we're going to talk about what it means for us to take up the yoke of Christ. So truly, the path to discipleship starts for us when we agree to take up the yoke of Christ. Now, that doesn't mean that salvation starts for us in that moment when we take up the yoke of Christ. Our salvation starts when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And oftentimes, we can get these two ideas kind of mixed up in our minds. And it makes sense that it might be a bit confusing for us when we think about salvation and service to Jesus as being the same thing or at the very least tied together. When I think about salvation that is found in Jesus and our service in his name, I think the best way to describe them or keep them straight for yourself and, and in your mind is this. Salvation is an internal thing. It is something that we are given by Jesus because of the sacrifice he made for us on the cross. That way we could be made whole again through our belief in him. And our service in his name is the outside things we do because of the gratefulness that we have in our hearts for his salvation. So think of it this way. Salvation is inward facing. Service is outward facing. One is given to us and one we give to others. Now, as we were uh, heard in our scripture for today, when we read the verses, there's kind of a very strange uh, juxt juxtaposition that we find when we look at verses 1128 and 1129. In verse 1128, Jesus says, Come to me, all that you are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. I like the sound of that. How about you guys? Come and I will give you rest. Jesus says, I know you're carrying so much on your shoulders. I know that this world is beating you down each and every day. I know that you're feeling as if you're so tired that you just can't take it anymore. And because Jesus knows this, he tells us, simply come to him and he will give us rest. 
And now, I don't know about all of you, though, but I can take a pretty educated guess to how you feel about that. It does sound really good, doesn't it? If I'm being honest with you all, in my own life over the past few weeks, they ha it has been filled with so many different emotions. The very highest of highs and the very lowest of lows. And if I'm honest with you, I'm standing before you today feeling quite drained by it. And maybe you feel that same way too. But the interesting part of how these two scriptures change uh, on what seems to be a dime is this. In 1128, we're told Jesus will give us rest. But in 1129, he asks us to take up his yoke. Now, I know that I'm speaking with a group that probably know exactly what a yoke is. But just in case you don't know, a yoke is a wooden bar or frame by which draft animals are joined together, usually by the head or neck, so that they can work together. So how is it then that we are supposed to be given rest, and at the same time, we are to be working? They seem very contradictory, right? How can you rest and work? So I want you to think about work, and I want you to think about uh, the work that you've done in your life that was really physically hard labor. A day that you worked so hard you thought you couldn't possibly keep going on. Maybe it was bailing hay on a hot summer's day. Maybe it was working a double shift and feeling like you couldn't stand any longer after hour 12 hit and knowing that you still had time to go. I know for me, I can pinpoint the exact day in my life when I worked physically harder than any other day. If I were to try to do this today, I would probably have a heart attack and die. So when I was working at the borough of Lewistown, I had the lovely opportunity to fill in for a garbage thrower that was healing up from a medical procedure. Normally, the summer kids worked with the street crew. We didn't work on the garbage trucks, but a guy was out sick, and lucky me, I got picked to be the guy who filled in for him. Now, if you don't know what a thrower is, it's the guy that rides on the back of the truck and throws the garbage into the back of the truck and then runs the compactor. And while I was filling in on this job, it happened to be that I got to work on July 5th. Now, this particular July 5th was not too much unlike the one we just had. It was very hot. It was very humid. There was not a cloud in the sky during the day, and the sun was beating, hard, beating down hard. But why was it this day that sticks out in my mind? I was on the back of the truck for about a month and a half. Why this day? Well, because July 5th is a day that comes after July 4th, and we don't work on July 4th, right? So that meant as the garbage thrower, we were going to run a double route that day on July 5th. So we had to do twice the amount of work in one day, and we were given an extra four hours to do it in, which meant that we had to hustle for every single bag that we were picking up that day. Now in Lewistown, uh, there at the time, it may have changed now, um, there were no big garbage cans that you rolled to the back and then hit the lever and it dumped it in for you. It was just trash bags on the side of the road. And you can believe that after everyone's July 4th uh, barbecues and leftover food, those bags were full and heavy and just smelled so great. And I remember as I was working at one point, I was riding on the back of the truck. I was holding on uh, to the back and we were going to the next street. Uh, to start picking up again, and I nearly passed out from heat stroke on the back of the truck. I ran out of water that day, and I had forgot to bring my wallet with me to buy more on the route because there is no going back to the shop once you're out on the road. And I'm still very grateful for the driver of the truck that day taking pity on me and buying me two bottles of water at the gas station just to get me through that day. When I got home that day, I I walked up to our apartment, I got to the top of the stairs, I went directly and got a cold shower, and then I went directly to bed. And I woke up the next day for work. I slept for nearly 12 hours because I was so wiped out. It's maybe the only time in my life where I miss dinner. And I was feeling 
so tired from that work. And that day has always stuck with me. And whenever I am feeling as if I am tired in my work today, I look back on that day and I remember what being tired really is. So as you think about your day of work in your life, when you come to those hard days, remember how you made it through that hard day before. So then how can we have any rest when we are working? Well, like everything else, God has a purpose for us when we take up the yoke of Jesus. And yes, part of that is to rest. When we think about the idea of rest, what do we think about? Well, we often think about taking a nap, sitting back and relaxing. Maybe we think about taking a vacation, getting some time off, getting away from our daily struggles. See, that's how we think about rest, but it's not necessarily how God thinks about rest. What I think Jesus is saying to us in this scriptures is, I know that your lives are hard. I know that you have struggles and burdens. But if you are willing to follow me, if you are willing to work in my name, there is rest to be found. It is possible because when we are following what Jesus wants from us, and we are doing work in his name, there is a peace that we can have in our hearts that is unlike any other peace. When we are dedicated to doing what Jesus wants us to be doing, we gain rest in knowing that we are pleasing our master. The feeling of the good that comes from serving others in the name of Jesus is one that truly revitalizes our souls. Now, perhaps you've thought about this before, and you may be saying to yourself, well, if it is true that doing work in the name of Jesus gives you a feeling of rest, then why is it that so many pastors burn out in the ministry? It is no secret that the calling of a pastor can be a difficult one. It is no secret that many people enter into ministry and find out that they are burned out by the work and then they leave ministry. So then what happens? If there is rest in God's work, why do so many ministers, so many pastors burn out in their work? Well, I believe the same issues that burn out a pastor are the same issues that burn out lay people in their own areas of ministry. The first is this, the lack of taking rest. In our ever-changing, on-the-go society, we have seemingly forgotten that God does call us to take a day of rest. We need to take the idea of a Sabbath day seriously. Now, the Sabbath day does not necessarily mean Sunday, does it? After all, if it was only a Sunday that you could have Sabbath on, a pastor would never have a Sabbath day, right? You need to take this idea of a Sabbath and dedicating a day of rest in your life seriously because, and it doesn't have to be a day where you sit around and do nothing. Though if that is what you need on that day, I would encourage you to do it. But if we are considering how we can grow as disciples through our rest, then the Sabbath should be a day of worship and reflection. A day of praying and studying scriptures and listening for what God wants to tell us. If we take some time to rest in the way that God calls us to rest, then we will find the issue of burning out will lessen in our lives. Now, the second way that I think pastors and people burn out in their work for God is that we take on what we call uh, the Lone Ranger mentality in our areas of ministry. I have to do this all on my own. If I don't do this, no one else will. I would ask others for help, but they're just going to say no. Well, how do we know? How do we know they will say no if we ask them? Oh, if we ask people for help, we might have to give up some control. We might have to allow others into our little area, but chances are, if you're willing to ask for help, you will find it. Because I will remind you that a yoke was usually designed 
for more than one animal to carry. We need to remember that for us to grow as disciples is helpful to have others growing alongside us. We have to be a, a community that is supporting one another in the ministry that we are doing. So if you need help, ask for it. If you are asked, really consider how you can help before you just say no. I know that we are all busy people. But if we want to grow as disciples of Jesus and we want to have success in our ministry and we want to help provide rest for one another, we have to be willing to work with one another. I think maybe at times we could use a reminder that there wasn't one disciple of Jesus. There were 12 disciples of Jesus. So as we move forward this year, let us work towards growing as disciples of Jesus through doing good works in his name and finding the rest that we need in him. Now we know that when we have hit those hard times in our life, when the burdens feel as if it's too much for us to carry, that we can always come to Jesus and ask him for the rest that we need. Because we know that he is always willing to take up that yoke right with us and work and walk with us. Throughout, uh, throughout no matter what it is that we are facing. My challenge for you this week is one that I think you guys are going to like this week. And it is this. Rest when you need it. And do so in a way that will help you grow in Christ. Amen.